This episode is brought to you by FX's Feud, Capote vs. the Swans. Inspired by actual events, the series tells the story of Truman Capote and the women he betrayed. The original housewives, they were society's most elite women. Rich, glamorous socialites who defined a bygone era of high society New York. From creator Ryan Murphy, this drama series features an all-star cast, including Naomi Watts, Demi Moore, and Diane Lane. FX's Feud premieres January 31st on FX Stream on Hulu. Let's do this thing. Hey, everybody. I'm Kelly here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Today, we're going to talk to you all about decorating a room from start to to finish. What we'll be talking about is ways for you not to sort of water bug around, ways for you to make a plan, execute it, and be really happy in the room in a very short period of time. Not an hour, but in a, in a relatively short period of time. Because I think, and I think Anita would agree, sometimes what happens to our, us, to clients, to everyone, is you start a room and you kind of lose your momentum. Maybe you didn't have a plan. Maybe you weren't prepared. Maybe you got distracted. But today we are going to give you these concrete steps and concrete things that you will do in conjunction with each step so you can get a room to a place where you're really enjoying it. Of course, you're going to add some things later on, you know, from your travels or just from life in general, but the room is going to be, for all intents and purposes, done when you go through all these steps. So let's get to it. All right. Step one, photograph your room. I like to think of this as kind of a baseline. You're going to photograph your room the way it is. Uh, You're going to do this for several reasons. One is so you have a picture of where you started because you're going to want to look back and say, look at how far I've come. This is what my room looked like in the beginning. And look at what it looks like as the after photo. So I think it's great to see what it started looking at. So don't do anything. Go take your picture now so that even if you just move that painting that you hate, that'll kind of count as one of the improvements for the room. Thing. And the other reason we're doing this is because that is really going to help you figure out what is wrong with your room. When you see your room in the photo, you're going to notice things about your room that you do not see when you're actually standing in your room. And then once you've got all these photos, then you're going to make a list in step two, what you like and what you don't like about the room. That will be your baseline assessment of the room. That's your concrete job for step two is making this list. Your concrete job Mm -hmm. for step one is producing these photos. Right. And that's step two, you know, really kind of take a hard look at the room, what you like, and what you don't like. Some of the things you'll be able to change, some of the things you probably won't be able to, but that's okay. We're just going to make a list of everything. And then your step three, you're going to create a mood board. So whether that is a Pinterest board for you, whether it's a folder with tear sheets, whether it's a cork board with things tacked up on it, collecting swatches. Right. I mean, I think this is kind of your point where you're gathering inspiration. You're not even worried about if this picture goes with that picture. Right now, you're just kind of collecting information, blue skying, just kind of what would your dream room look like? What you're going to have at the end of this step is a mood board, like Kelly said, or a Pinterest board. And then you're going to use this for step four when you go in and decide on your style and color palette. So once you collect all these photos and and all this beautiful inspiration, you'll see a theme or a pattern beginning to recur. You're going to find that, oh, I really like French chairs, or you know what? I really am a mid-century modern girl. I mean, this is how you're going to really be able to kind of narrow down into a particular style, and you're going to see certain colors emerge too. So in step four, you're going to put a, a plan together that basically kind of outlines your particular style, and you're going to be listing the colors that you're going to be using your particular color palette for the room. Exactly. So step four is you're going to use what you created in step three. You're going to see the common threads and you're going to see, oh, wow, I pinned that same thing or something similar, you know, 12 times to my board, or I I keep coming up with this same uh, color palette or this particular fabric. So you're going to see the common threads because those are the things that you really 
are gravitating towards. Those are the things that are resonating with you. And you'll pull them out of the, the board in whatever form you created it in step three. And that's step four. So you're going to kind of be narrowing it down by step four. Then step five, this is kind of a fun one. Now you've got the idea of the room. You've kind of like got an idea of where you want to be going. You've narrowed down maybe your colors, maybe even to certain fabrics and materials. And now you're going to take inventory, not just of that room like you did in step one, but inventory of all the pieces you have, whatever room they're in. Because as we have discussed many times before, we love moving pieces from room to room. So take inventory of what you have. Maybe you even have some stuff in storage. Dare say, I may have a few chairs (laughs) up in the attic and I do fold them down. Sometimes I forget they're there. So this is what taking inventory in step five is all about. So each of the pieces, whether it's currently in the room you're working on or in a different place in your house, remember that you want each piece to support the look, the vibe, the vision that you have been working on already in step one through four. So don't keep the rooster if the rooster is not supporting your mid-century look, you know, don't keep something that Aunt Tilly gave to you because you feel bad. Maybe you can find a new place for that. If it's not supporting the vision that you have for the room, then you don't have to get rid of it necessarily, but take it out of the room, take it off the list. You now have an inventory list of things that you already own that you would like to use in this room. Ultimately, maybe not all of them are going to work, but that's okay at this point. You're taking inventory. Sometimes, I imagine, and I I guess I would assume Anita does this too. It happens to me when I'm trying to go to sleep a lot. Or I think about, oh, that would really look great over there, wouldn't it? And then I wake up in the morning and I remember it. And I'm like, oh, let me try. And I'm like, oh gosh, no, that doesn't work at all. It's too small. It's too big. It's wrong. But in your mind's eye, it might be working. So you can try all those things. You've got now your inventory list. That's your concrete thing you're going to be doing from step five. And then Ultimately, as we go on through the steps, you can try those pieces in the room and see what works and what doesn't. I think this is also the time you're going to look and see, are my accessories the right size? Because sometimes we have too many little things and it looks cluttery. This is the time you want to look and say, are my accessories the right size for the space? Is this the artwork that I want that's in here? Is it the right size? Do I have too much artwork on the walls? This is also when you're going to be assessing your curtains. Are they working for the room? Are they hung at the right height? Are, is my rug the right size? Is it big enough? Do my pillows need to be changed? You're going to be making a massive inventory at this point, not just the furniture. Yes, absolutely. Don't limit it to the furniture. Think about all the pieces and all the components of the room for sure. Excellent point, because I may have just said the word furniture. We don't want to limit it to that. Okay, so step six. Now, let's get real. You have to consider your lifestyle. Who lives in the house? Uh, What kind of pets do you have? What kind of pets are you planning on having? All these things. So make a list, consider all of that, and then make a list of the activities that need to be supported for this room. You know, if it, because we're talking about any room in your home. You could be talking about the living room, like we've been working on in our challenge, and this is all working together with that. You could be focusing on your bedroom when you're listening to this episode. So it really depends on what the room is supposed to be used for, but more so what you and the people who live there with you want to use the room for. So what needs to be in the room to support and serve you and your family, uh, whether they be furry or human? Also, the type of entertaining you may or may not want to do in this particular room. So that's really important considerations because you may have come up with a style that initially in steps one, two, three, four, you may have come up with a vision of this like extraordinarily elegant room, but... (laughs) You have triplets uh, that are seven and four dogs and an iguana. And one has a delicate digestive system. (laughs) That's what I always had. My dogs always had some issue. So, um, yeah. So let's keep it real in step six. And you can definitely gravitate towards any look you want and you can execute it. But you want to make sure that if that's the case and you want to do really, uh, you know, a more elegant look or something, then we're going to really want to look for performance fabrics. There's, There's workarounds depending on the people you're living with, but you have to recognize it. 
So true, Kelly. I mean, this is when we really do need to be practical and think, like you said, do we need performance fabrics? Do we need a rug that's going to handle stains? Do we need the room to have extra seating? Is this a room where it has to do double duty, where it's a dining room during the day or a dining room at night and a workspace during the day? This is really when you kind of think about who's going to be in here and how are they going to be using the room? Exactly. So you want to do step seven? Yes. Step seven is the fun part. This is when you do your wish list. What do you want in the room? So you're going to, you should have already assessed and known, okay, now I need a new dresser or I need a new this or that. Here's where you're going to put your list of things that you want for the room. And these tend to be kind of your bigger pieces. So you're going to have a wish list of everything you want in your space. So this might be your bigger accessories or any furniture, rugs, carpet, uh, curtains window treatments, anything that you're going to need for the room. What a fun list. So let yourself go wild. Now, of course, in accordance with the vibe, the colors, and the fabrics that you have already curated in the prior step, you need to stay on the plan because we're taking it step by step. But list everything that you would want in the space. Don't worry about budget. Not yet. (laughs) Don't even worry about the size of the furniture. Um, And if you really want to worry about budget, listen to 506, because we did a really good job of doing high style on budget in that last episode. So it's kind of a wish list, but be a little practical in there too, because I like to think about functionality. That's why I really enjoy step six when you're really thinking about the functionality of the room. But make it the ultimate list of everything you'd want in the room, regardless of space or budget, and have fun doing that. Then step eight, you're going to measure and map. Now, you probably have a good idea of the size of the room, uh, but you might, you're not going to know exactly whether any of these items that you've put on this wish list are going to fit in there until you really take exact measurements. So now you kind of know what you want. You're not sure if you can afford it yet, maybe, but let's figure out if it's going to fit and actually work in the space before we even decide whether or not it's going to fit into the budget. Mm -hmm. So I would consider not only height, the width, the dimensions of the room, but also the doorways leading to this room. Oh, you're mean. (laughs) No, I'm just very practical. So if you can't get it in there and you buy the sofa that you blow the budget on that and then you can't get it in the room, you are going to be super sad. Everybody has different ways they like to do this. I'm a little loosey goosier than I think Anita is. I know you did at some point with your house, all this cool stuff where you actually knew exactly what was going to fit where. So you Mm -hmm. can speak to that. I played a little fast and loose. Are you saying you skipped this step? Well, I don't skip it, but I might just err on the side of, you know, if it really looks a little too big, I'm not going to get it. I am really good at eyeballing. I have very good sense of spatial Mm -hmm, relation, mm -hmm. and I think you probably do too. But So it's really whatever's going to suit your personality. But definitely you want to get a good tape measure. and You want to really know the dimensions of the room and also take in consideration where the windows are, how far are, are they off the floor, because that might make a difference with the type of sofa you're going to choose or a headboard that you're going to choose. You, you know, you, you want to think about mm-hmm. all of the dimensions, not just, you know, how how much square footage is in the room. Uh, I think, Kelly, this really just kind of depends on how much you're doing in the room. If you're really just changing out a chair or some artwork or something, you don't really need to draw it out and cut it out, all the pieces of paper. But, you know, if you're moving into a new house, if you're completely redoing the room, I highly recommend that you not skip this step at all. I really like the idea of using the paper, graph paper, drawing it out and cutting each little piece of furniture out. I've done this before, and it was so very helpful uh, when we've moved into this house. If you want to use software, I prefer uh, Sweet Home 3D. It gives you a 3D version and uh, the 2D version, and that's actually some free software. So that's a great uh, app some software that you can use on your computer and it works quite well. Oh, that's a good tip. I didn't know anything about that. So step nine. So now you've kind of got your room measurements. You've kind of getting an idea of this list of furniture, how you might place it in the room. You're knowing that some of the items you may purchase are going to fit. Let's not forget our lighting. Let's not do the lighting as an afterthought, because that would be a big mistake. You need to consider a lighting plan as well. So that is step nine. 
you definitely want to have three to four sources of light in the room. And I would consider all different types of light. Just don't think about lamps or, oh, it's okay. I've got four hi-hats and I'm covered overhead light. No, 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 no. We need a lot of different sources of lighting and consider different forms of lighting. So sconces, uh, floor lamps, table lamps, pendants, chandelier, you know, we're, we're talking about just could be any room in your home. So there's so many different types of lighting. There are even really great battery operated lamps now. So if you've got an outlet deficit in this particular room, you might want to consider that. You might want to consider gaunces that are not hardwired. So ones that you can actually have a cord and plug in. I know Lamps Plus has a search feature on their site where you can actually search by plug-in or non-hardwire, and it's great, and they have a nice selection of different kinds of sconces. They even have a couple of pendants like that, so that might be a good option for you that saves you some money because if you have to bring an electrician, A, that's going to be something that's going to cost some money, so it's going to impact your budget. And B, it's also going to impact you know, when you want to have the electrician come in. Don't want to have a new carpet unrolled and then somebody's got to put in new outlets and things like that. So you want to plan all of this. Know where your outlets are. Know where the sources of light are going to be. And so that is step nine. Make your lighting plan. Hey, we'll be right back with the rest of the show, but keep listening so we can continue bringing you DTT. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story. The dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter Jennifer Grant and ex-wife Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt and then the next step is to budget everything so yeah we kind of ignored it until now (laughs) but you want to put your furniture in a spreadsheet oh a spreadsheet okay I don't want to do graph paper and I don't want to do spreadsheets. Okay. This is not my vibe. (laughs) (laughs) I know you hate spreadsheets. I love spreadsheets. 
I have a spreadsheet for everything. It's very helpful if you're comfortable with spreadsheets and if you like them. So it'd be great to list all the big pieces that you need and a budget mount, amount at the bottom. This is the, what's your budget? What are you going to work with? Uh, do you, you know, how much money do you have to work with? $500 budget is not a $5,000 budget. So that's going to make a big difference on what you can get. So you want to put that number at the bottom and then you're going to kind of spread that number around as you think you're going to be able to use the money to buy the things on your list. And there may be a big disconnect on your budget and what you can buy. <laughs> So this is going to be realistic time, and this might be where you uh, take some things off of your list, and I'm I'm not going to say you're not going to get them, but maybe just put them on a for the future list. Right, because our room is going to be done. Anyone came into your house, they'd be like, this room looks great, and they'll say to you, oh, you know, it looks great. Are you done? People ask me that all the time. Of course I'm not done, because we love doing this. So you're you're done, but you're never done, 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 right? So maybe it's something you can't afford. Maybe you decide that you'll get the staples, and then you'll add in later on. But nobody's going to know except you in your heart of hearts. And if they, you know, took a list, a look at one of your your lists and one of our prior steps, that the room wasn't absolutely complete. Another thing I would like you to consider in the budget, whether you're doing it on a post-it note or a <laughs> spreadsheet, or don't do it in your head because sometimes you can just change those numbers and add, drop a zero here and there. Think about whether you do need an electrician. Think about things like: Do the floors need to be redone before I get in here? Did do I want to? add a little molding. You know, these are all things that you might want to do in connection with creating this beautiful space that you have envisioned. So consider all of that, not just the furniture, draperies, accessories, carpets like that. So maybe some more some foundational things and whether you need to get in some professionals to do that. And I would also budget in about 20%. If you want to cheat it a little, maybe 15, just add that in as a little bit of a cushion. And so then in your mind, you're saying, I'm spending this much, but you know, wouldn't it be great if you came in under? Yes, that would be terrific. But then what if you find something amazing and you'd like to spend a little more on a particular item? Or when we get to one of the last steps, you find something that you just have to have to have. So now you've budgeted it in, right? So you don't want to go to the, the absolute last penny because if something comes up that you need to address, particularly something if it's, you know, the way the room functions, like whether you need another outlet or something like that, you're going to have to spend the money for that. Well, and then there's tax and sometimes there's delivery fees. You might need some white glove service. You might need something assembled that you don't feel comfortable doing. So yeah, you need to factor in some of that. So that's not the funnest step, but now the next step, you get to start to shop and that's super fun. So make your shopping list. Now, this is the time where you're going to really decide, you know, what are the things you're going to start with? And my suggestion is you start with the staples. You don't want to start with, even if it's an amazing piece of art, if it's a living room and you don't have anything to sit on, (laughs) right? So you're going to want to start with the sofa and some chairs and a coffee table. Those are the things that you're going to want to put your first dollars towards. And hopefully you've got something left in your budget where you can add, you know, the extra jacket or pieces and like that. But start the shopping list. You can have those other wonderful things that are really going to make the room wow on the list. But top of the list should be the staples. And at this point, you've pro- you know you've gone through all the steps, so you really have narrowed down. You may have one sofa that you are just hell bent on getting, or maybe you've got three and you're choosing between those or something. Whatever it is, double check the measurements mm-hmm. at this time before you buy. Double check, triple check. Right, especially if you're doing all this online, because if you're going by that picture, the pictures can be very deceiving as to how big the item is, if you're not seeing it uh, next to other things, you know, in context. So uh, you really need to check those measurements. Colors can look very different on the internet as well. So you definitely want to order swatches if you're buying anything sight unseen. Yes, if you can. Sometimes you can't get those, but this is the fun part. I think this is a great time to go shop in person at some places near you, go to the antique stores, go to the new stores, and then compare prices online. And a lot of times the same sofa 
is sold at many different places. So definitely shop around. Right. And so those are all the steps to getting this room in a position where it is gorgeous and you love it and you've done the homework and you've made the plan and you're staying within the budget and you've got a little extra left over and this could be your bonus step. Recognize and act on special investment pieces that you may come upon. Now that might not be while you're planning this room, while it's getting done, or even shortly after it is, quote unquote, completed and done. You need to sort of activate your designer radar and you have to be able to spot these statement pieces when they're out there in the universe and know that they are going to work in this room. To add that element that is going to separate this room from anybody else's on planet Earth and really make it yours and make it amazing. So that's another good reason to have this little bit extra budget in there and maybe you've got it left over. So when you see something like that, you know, oh my gosh, this would totally make my room if I put this in this room that I just finished and it's going to be spectacular, then you can make the move. That is not really an impulse buy. That is something that now, because you've done all the planning you might not know exactly what that wow item is going to be. Trust yourself. When you see it, you're going to know. These steps are so important and they are applicable to any room in your house. This is excellent planning. And so you're not sort of willy-nilly out there buying something here, buying something there. Then you don't really like it. Then it doesn't fit. It doesn't work with the rest of the stuff that you have. That's a situation where you're going to waste money. And you're not going to be happy at the end of the day. So these steps are great. They are very logical. They take you from either an empty room or a room you don't care for right now to an absolutely beautiful finished room that you're going to really enjoy. And I love the idea that we've baked in these concrete steps so you can really feel like you've accomplished it. And don't move on to the next step until you've done the homework until you've produced the deliverable for each one of these steps, because that's how it's going to work. Yes. Couldn't agree anymore. So what's the challenge? Speaking of, this is all sort of working so beautifully with our challenge. I love it. Oh, it's hand in glove with our challenge. You know, as so far with the DTT challenge, we're focused on your living room. And step one was photograph your room. And step two was making that list of things that you like and don't like about your living room. So this is step three. So what are we at? We are at the Pinterest board phase. We're at the step where you're going to go create a Pinterest board or mood board. Uh, this is where you're going to post all these photos. Don't worry about the your budget right now. Don't worry about if all the photos go together. If they're practical, you're just posting photos right now that you love. And we'll worry about those other things in the next step. This morning... I pulled out one of my folders with all the tear sheets in. And it's really fun. Well, now that's fun That filing. is fun filing. So I got up super early this morning. I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. Let me go through it, see if there's anything that still resonates with me. I, I got some ideas. So I kind of called out the stuff that I wasn't going to do or things that I went in a different direction on. But I have a very small pile now, just maybe four or five sheets of things that I'm definitely going to act on. So if you do uh, like to do that as well and create folders with tear sheets or even if you printed out things from your computer or I'm usually pulling out from magazines and whatnot. I had just have a big folder. I tuck them in there. Whether you're doing a room or you're not doing a room, I think it's a really great resource for yourself. Just like Pinterest is too. Sometimes I go back to my boards and I go through. But I know there's something about holding the piece of paper in my hand that I really like. Mm-hmm. Going through it, maybe every six months or every year at least, and seeing what you've got in there, seeing how maybe how your tastes have changed over time, and seeing if there are any things in there that you were like, oh my gosh, I forgot I wanted to do that. And then you can act upon those great ideas. Okay, so what's our DTT defines today? Today we're defining Chesser. Chesser. So Chesser, it's kind of like the word Is that a cheese? <laughs> No, but it's kind of like brunch is a combination of lunch and breakfast. This is a combination of a dresser and a chess. Oh, how it's funny. A my girls, so my girls say, call it a uh, dunch <laughs> when you're dinner and lunch. 
Oh, okay, okay. We, and we have Brenner, which is breakfast. Oh, yeah, brain. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Chessers are narrower than a dresser Ooh. and shorter than a chest. But, you know, often these are antiques, so they have that tilting mirror on them. Uh-huh. So that's a Chesser. I'd never even heard of that ever. <laughs> well, I hadn't either, but I found it and I thought, well, this is so fun. But I've definitely seen those one. pieces. In fact, uh, we have a few older dressers with the tilting mirror on top, so I wonder if they're Chessers. Oh, well, they probably are. Probably are. Go ahead. Clean out your closet. Then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their ultra stretch super wide leg pants at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well. And we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. What? Yeah, what's your crush? Oh, I found a podcast that I am enjoying so much. You know, there aren't that many gardening podcasts out there. Like there aren't that many decorating podcasts out there and you really only need this one. But in gardening, I've had a few that I really enjoy. And every once in a while, I'll type in the word garden or gardening and I came up with a a new one to me. Organic Gardening Podcast. It's from the UK. So, you know, I already love it. And it's just a lovely show. They have these segments where they'll talk all about a gardening issue or something. Then they'll bring in an expert. Then they go to the mailbag and they have a question. And I always learn something. Sometimes a little bit different because, you know, they're talking about things that are going on in the UK and whatnot. And I'm in California. But it doesn't matter. Just this spirit of gardening. They are so into it. They love gardening and they love being gardeners. So if you're a gardener or you want to be a gardener, I would highly recommend the Organic Gardening Podcast and we'll link it in the show notes. I'm not as into gardening as you are, but this sounds like a fun podcast to listen to. Lovely people to listen to. So I spent a lot of time with them last weekend out in my garden (laughs) because when I'm gardening, I always listen to gardening podcasts. So my crush, oh, well, this is kind of an indoor gardening thing. And that is a sprouting lid for a wide mouth mason jar. So I've been making my own microgreens for our salads and sandwiches. You are something else, girl. (laughs) It's a plastic sprout lid and it has a stainless steel screen on it. 
so that you germinate the seeds in the mason jar and then turn it upside down. You water your seeds and turn it upside down. The water drains out and then your sprouts grow in the jar. And when they kind of are fill up the jar, you're done. You put another lit, plastic lid on and then pop it in the refrigerator. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This sounds fantastic. So are they growing in the glass, up into yes. the glass like a cloche? Well, it's a quart mason jar with a wide lid. And I have a, a seed mix I bought. I'll include a link to the one I bought. It's for salad greens. I put two tablespoons of the seeds in, and then you soak it in two cups of water for the first 12 hours. And then after that, every 12, 12 hours, you give it two cups of water. Just rinse it in the water, drain it out, and you just set it upside down. It takes about four days, and you've got microgreens. I love this. And if anybody has kids, they would love it because it's almost instant gratification in four days. It is so fun to watch them grow. I cannot tell you. I, I'm so excited. And then you just kind of, the, and it's just packed with the greens. You just have to put your fork in there to get them out. They're so in there. Okay, so, so I'm just trying to picture this. Okay, so, so let me let me say what I think it is, and you tell me if I'm right or wrong. So okay. you've got the wide mason jar, which I like those. I, I have some of those. But so mm -hmm. are you just buying the top or you get the whole thing? This is just the lid. So you're going to buy... Okay, so you buy the lid for a wide mouth. Right, and it comes with a set of two lids. But it's got kind of feet on it, too, so you can put it upside down where the water's draining out, okay. and then the feet are holding it up. Okay, and so they're growing up into the glass, as if in mm -hmm. like a terrarium sort of situation. Yes, exactly. And then you unscrew it, and you pop it down, and then you just you harvest, and then you put it back together and grow some you more? Do, well, you don't really harvest. You just kind of... Take off that lid when it's full, when yeah. the jar is full, you take off that lid and I put on a plastic lid, Yeah. put it in my refrigerator. And then when we have salad every day, I just pull it out, put a fork in there to kind of harvest some for the day. And then I just put it back in the refrigerator. Oh my gosh. Oh, I have to do this. I can't wait till the show yeah. notes come out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'll send you the links. I mean, I'll send you a picture of my greens in the jar. Ooh. Yeah. It's really cool. You're going to love it. Oh, you're starting a little microgreen farm. You're going to be Baby out there steps. listening to gardening <laughs> podcasts all weekend too. Any moment now. Baby steps, baby steps. Oh, yeah, I love it. Right. That is great. And you know, it's such a nice thing for people to be able to do in the winter time because if you're, if you're a gardener, you know, all you're really doing now, if you don't live in a warm place, is going through your seed catalogs and whatnot. So how fun to have a mini garden right there on your counter or any windowsill, right? You could do it anywhere. I don't even, you don't even need it on the windowsill. And I just put it on the counter. Evie kitchen. might like to do it with her class because that would be so fun for teachers. Oh, that's a great idea, except she's English, so. Hmm. That's okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> English students eat. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Good point. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We've had so much fun. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Want to talk to us? Well, we really want to talk to you. So let's schedule a design consult. And Nita and I are here to give you individualized, actionable advice on how to create the beautiful home you want and deserve. It's so easy to schedule a design consult with us. Simply click the link in the show notes or head to decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. When we talk to you on the scheduled time, we will be ready with so many great tips, advice, and yes, tricks. So sign up today for a design consult. We can't wait to talk to you.